So I'm the training manager for uh, Positive About Down Syndrome uh, and Caroline is joining us today. She's uh, the maternity manager of our um, uh, regional coordinators at PADS Stroke Down Syndrome UK. And um, we're both going to tell you about how we can support you as health visitors and uh, the new initiatives that we have running as a charity. So just a brief introduction. Positive about Down Syndrome PADS is an arm, is an, initi an initiative from the national charity Down Syndrome UK. Um, we've been going nearly seven years now and um, we're, f we're hopefully filling in the gaps and how to best to support families um, of children with Down Syndrome, but we also, you know, support you as professionals. So we... Um, we, so we've had various studies published in the British Journal of Midwifery and other journals. Nicola and I are part of the Down Syndrome Policy Group who are um, helping Liam Fox in the movement of the Down Syndrome Act. And hot off the press is that we we now have been um, collaborating with the Royal College of Midwives and we have a, well, we, we, we've got a, an eye learning suite of Down Syndrome modules. Um, so as a as a as a parent led organization we consider ourselves to be the experts in understanding um what uh, parents need and what they you know how how they uh how they receive the information and how they get meaningful support so we work with local hospitals universities and all healthcare providers we talk to anyone about down syndrome we're able to um, supply our resources um, for free and support and training um, so that you can best support your families. So we believe that anybody who has a child with Down syndrome can can go and visit all healthcare providers without um, coming across any kind of negative attitudes or out of date ideas of what Down syndrome means to them as a family. In terms of an organization, we did a little survey last year to see whether um, we were providing the right information that parent want, parents wanted. And we uh, we found very good responses actually that 95, 90% said that PADS is the place that they go to get support and they are um, people who are on our, um, our groups they trust the information that we we give them so it was really good to ask that question and thank goodness it came back in a positive way so as an organization this is just the tip of the iceberg of what we provide so we support families we're able to provide counseling should the family need that they just need to get in contact with us we can provide one-to-one -one sessions or group sessions depending on what the counselor thinks is appropriate we do training like this to um healthcare professionals and um you know anybody who would like to learn more about down syndrome we provide macaton um courses that you're able to join all these kind of things that some families are not able to access. And so we're hoping that we're, we're filling that gap to make sure there's a level playing field of what parents are able to access. Um, as I mentioned, we're involved in campaigning, making sure that the voices of people with Down syndrome themselves are, are, are heard and um, their families uh, are getting the support they need. We provide resources uh, for professionals and for parents. You just need to look on our website to see what resources we have. But we're going to tell you um, a bit more about that and, and information about Down syndrome, which I'm hoping that you'll find really useful. So in terms of the families that you come across, what are they worrying about? If they've just had a baby that's had Down, that's got Down syndrome or they've just been given that diagnosis and you've been put in contact with them, what are they worrying about? I mean, the main worries, these are the main worries. And I have to say that I, I'm a parent myself. I felt, I felt all of these. So they're, they're very common. Um, I don't want my other children to be burdened. What about the impact on our family? Um, statistics show that um, siblings are not adversely affected by having a sibling um, with a child, a uh, sibling with Down syndrome. In fact, a lot of them go into caring professions. So they, you know, it's a positive there. They never fit in, they'll live with us forever. I have to say that working with young people with Down syndrome, as I do, is part of the National Down Syndrome Policy Group. They don't want to live with their parents. They don't want to live with um, care assistants coming in, support uh, PAs coming in, helping them with those skills. They don't want that interference. So they are striving to learn those skills, to live uh, as an independent life as they want to. Um, so uh, that's 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 a quite a common thing. I, why I thought it would be d different for anybody with Down syndrome, I don't know, but yeah, they want the same life goals as everybody else. Um, Will we be able to cope with the extra pressures? I mean, I'm not saying there aren't any extra pressures uh, in being a parent of a child with Down syndrome, but being a parent full stop comes with pressures. 
And I think we're in quite a privileged position in the fact that we know um, our children have a diagnosis of pre-birth sometimes, but we know right at the beginning that they have that diagnosis. And there's a lot of support out there because of that, because we know an awful lot about Down syndrome. So in terms of extra pressures, there's support out there for, for every aspect of your of parenting a child with Down syndrome. Um, where do I get help parenting a child with Down syndrome? And that's that's where we come in. There, like I said, there's an awful lot of research um, gone on to um, how children with Down syndrome learn. And there's a big network of, of support, not just from charities like us, but you know, we get access generally to Portage pretty early on because we have that diagnosis. So the support networks are definitely in place. So in terms of the surveys that we've done, we found that uh, our families are telling us there is a lack of support and information when it comes to right at the start of their journey when they're told that their baby has Down syndrome. And in terms of moving on after having that baby with Down syndrome, there, there again is quite a lack of support in the main aspects that they want help with, like uh, breastfeeding. Constipation is really common with our children. And nystagmus, which, is, um, which I'm sure you know is a, a visual impairment that um, people with Down syndrome are more likely to have. And there's a real lack of support and information surrounding these really common aspects of bringing up a child with Down syndrome. Uh, in terms of mental health, we did as part of one of our surveys, um, we found that um, this is general, This is mater a maternity survey actually, but they found that the attitudes of healthcare professionals had a negative effect on their mental well-being, which is why we do these kind of awareness webinars. But in terms of inter uh, getting sufficient mental well-being support, it, it, it's quite low and it and it gets less in the postnatal period. So. This again, we're hoping that our next survey, which I think we're trying to um, to repeat every few years, that all of this will be going up um, quite quickly, we're hoping. Um, an issue that a lot of our parents have to deal with is diagnostic overshadowing, where um, a healthcare professional will make a sweeping statement saying things like, well, it's because they have Down syndrome, isn't it? Um, in terms of examples of this, uh, SEN dentists said, children like Lance won't tolerate braces, so we'll have to make do with crooked teeth. I mean, I'd like to say that these kind of things don't happen that often, but they really shouldn't happen at all. Um, I know a lot of our families have issues with constipation not really being um, given the, the support and, and help they need with their child having constipation because apparently uh, children with Down syndrome have big tummies. I know it's a generalization and this will certainly not be a, a, a professional bashing webinar, but it's just to make you aware that our families generally do um, um, come across quite a bit of diagnostic overshadowing, which obviously we need to stop you know, with your help. So um, a lot of this, webinar is, to, is is going to be covering you know your attitudes around down syndrome and your understanding of what that life with down syndrome is like so parents will look for you for information of support obviously and you hopefully you have quite an active role in in those early years and you can make a massive difference um so make sure that you know what life with down syndrome is like in the 21st century what people with down syndrome are able to achieve now I mean, it's completely different. My son is now 14 and I've seen things move really, really quickly since I've been in this, you know, in this role of being a parent of someone with Down syndrome. It's changing all the time in a life with Down syndrome now, especially now that we have the Down syndrome Act in England. We're hoping is, is just going to project, project their lives, their quality of life and whatever they can do uh, even, even further. So make sure that you don't have an outdated attitude um, an assumption of what people with Down syndrome can achieve because that comes hand in hand with an unconscious negative bias. So that's um, something that we're going to talk about in our best practice. In terms of times are changing, I'm sure, I'm sure you know this already, but children's and, uh, children and adults with Down syndrome are, are living longer. The life expectancy now is um, 60 plus years and they're living more fulfilling lives. There are now more opportunities for them um, at school and they're getting better supported at school and then going on to colleges and um, learning those skills that they need to live independent lives and also to get employment. Um, in terms of employment, that's a bit of a sticky wicket in the fact that only 7% of um, adults with Down syndrome get paid, uh, adults with Down syndrome with learning disabilities get paid work. And it's a really, really, uh, you know, small percentage but we're hoping that that will change um, as 
people with Down syndrome become more and more in the public eye. Um, hopefully that will that will change. But because of the improvements in healthcare education, the the people with Down syndrome have more of a role in the community, and that has a knock-on effect on their quality of life, obviously, and ultimately their life expectancy. So I'm now going to hand over to Caroline, who's going to give you more of the meat of the uh, the webinar and how you as professionals can ensure that parents uh, get the best care and support. So over to you, Caroline. Thank you, Lou. Um, really importantly, everybody, is as uh, to reiterate what Lou has already said, is that um, everyone working with uh, our families and with our children has a contemporary understanding of what it means to have Down syndrome. Um, because life, um, as Lewis said, has changed for uh, our families, even more so in the last few years and more recently. And it, it's really important that the, the professionals who work with um, our, our children, with our families, are able to understand that. And, and it really does have a big impact on lessening family stress and making sure that, that families' mental health is much better. Um, by all of you being um, you know, on board, on their sides, and knowing um, what life with Down syndrome is life, it, like, it, it really does um, help parents moving forward to support their children more effectively. And a really big part of that is around the language that you use and, and how you set the tone in those conversations that you have with families. Um, this is Billy, and it's important to say Billy has Down syndrome. He's not Down syndrome. He's not a Down's child. He's Billy, first and foremost. So we really, really want to um, really emphasize the fact that the language you use reflects the attitude that you have um, and towards the family and their child and to really push the fact that we want you to talk about the children as being the child first and, and the condition Down syndrome second. So this is Billy and he has Down syndrome. He's not a, a Down's child. So really please do think about that and that losing that label is important. On our website, um, we have a section, especially for health visitors, which you can see there's a picture of there uh, in the professional section. So please do go to that. And there are lots and lots of resources and lots of sources of information for you on there. And very recently, uh, we have produced a document focused on um, what we would advise for health visitors. Uh, and that was presented uh, by our CEO, Nicola, at the Institute of Health Visitors recently. Um, so quite a lot of uh, what I'm going to talk about today is also in that document, which is available on our website too. So part of the parental um, feedback was around, um, as I've already said, attitudes and understanding. Uh, and so here are some of the, the examples of that. Parents don't want um, don't want professionals to say that they're sorry and they don't want condolences to be offered. Instead, they want you know, support and understanding um, going forward. And it's really important, as I've already said, to consider the language because it really does have a big impact on uh, families from the very outset. Um, and that um, that constant ref reference to the baby having Down syndrome or um, the impact on um, maybe the baby's health going forward can also really impact on how parents connect with their baby and, and that bonding. So really considering your language early on right from the very beginning is important. Having that contemporary understanding, knowing that people with Down syndrome can and do lead successful, happy, fulfilled lives is really important as well. Um, and make having um, an assumption that the parents are going to know an awful lot about Down syndrome, um, you need to be careful about that because not all parents have that information from the very, very beginning. Many have you know, left the uh, hospital when baby has been born with little or no information and signposting. And so if you are able to do that signposting and make sure that you signpost them to sources of information, and um, please do do that. And that's you know what our website has available. Um, sometimes we get parents telling us that professionals have asked them about um, about Down syndrome because they have uh, not very much knowledge themselves, and really it needs to be you know the other way around. Uh, we really want everybody working with our families to have high expectations of our children. So not assuming that our children can't reach milestones. It might take them a, a little bit longer than a typically developing child to reach those milestones. But but to make sure that those milestones are something that's still focused on. And seeing the individual, seeing the, the individual as an individual person with individual um goals in life. Um, so not generalizing. So not talking about children as they or um or having an example of someone who works at ASDA, for instance. Um, and as Lou already mentioned, diagnostic overshadowing is something, sadly, that, that does commonly, commonly crop up with quite a lot of our families. They do experience that um, 
and and so how thinking about how um you would uh, address a situation if a family um had a child that you were working with who didn't have down syndrome with a similar uh, medical need um to make sure that that diagnostic overshadowing is not an issue for our families So some of the um, examples of be best practice that can um, ensure that you're giving the best quality support to families. Um, the first one uh, is making sure that the, the correct growth chart is being used. Uh, we do have families who, who contact us to say that they don't have the Down syndrome growth chart in their red books. Um, those are available through us. Um, they're available uh, through the website that they um, those can be bought from. Um, and I'm sure that your uh, local services also provide them, but just making sure that the families do have them because it it it, um, it has an impact because sometimes um, if babies are being weighed and then compared on the typical growth chart, it does look like maybe their weight gain or their growth um, is is not within um, the the right kind of levels, and so um, that can have an impact on families as well. So please make sure they've got the right kind of growth chart there. Signposting um, to local support groups. So if you find out the names of the local support groups in your area, that's really really great for making sure that families have access to uh, a local community um, that's that's face to face rather than um, rather than just online. But that that local support is really, really beneficial to families and making those links yourself so that you know who the, the local contacts are. Um, some pathways across the country, across uh, across the UK do have care pathways. Um, and that's something that that we would love to see developed more widely in services. Um, so do find out if your uh, local either not 19 service or your local trust has a, a care pathway in place and, and that families are able to follow that to get the right kind of care for their child. So we have um, a publication called uh, The Little um, Orange Book of Knowledge. Um, which I'll tell you a little bit about later on. And there, there is some more information in there to make sure that families know what the services are that they should be able to access because um, they will have uh, opportunities, hopefully, if they have them in their area to access services like Portage. Um, they may well have uh, neonatal services that they're uh, assigned to. They might be working with a dietitian. They might be working with uh, services that perhaps they're not fully aware of the role that those people have and what they're actually going to do for the family. Um, so again, important for them to, to have that access. Our parents, you know, they they need someone to advocate for them. Um, it can be really, really overwhelming. Um, and as a parent myself, um, I have been in that situation. It can be emotional. It can be difficult. It can be challenging to not know where to turn or who the services are that should be um, provided for you. And sadly, our families do have to battle the system quite a lot uh, to get the services that they need. So it's great if you can be the person who can say, no, you should have this um, provision. You, um, We can signpost you. We can refer you to the, to the services that you need to fight their corner. Um, the last one on there around developmental checks, uh, it can be an area of difficulty for families because, um, as I'm sure you're well aware, some of our children are not going to be meeting the uh, typically developing milestones. And so it can be upsetting if parents are, are offered, um, you know, a checklist um, or offered a, a questionnaire to uh, to talk about the the areas that their child's not developing in and and it, it can be really upsetting what we'd really like you to do is have some sensitivity obviously I'm sure you do um have sensitivity as to whether it's actually appropriate to do that um that questionnaire or or have that meeting in the same way that you would with perhaps a typically developing child some families do find that really helpful and um, those developmental checks because it can be useful for things like um uh, a, disability living allowance applications, for instance. Um, but really, it's down to individual uh, circumstances to decide whether that's um, an appropriate thing to do and how that might be managed. So this is just a snapshot of the many, many services that we have, and it's all available on our DSUK website. Um, I'm going to be talking a little bit about each of them, um, but as you can see, we've got a, a great deal of uh, services that we provide across all areas of health um, and education, um, and all of it's available on our websites under the different tabs. So I'll just go on to explain a little bit more about what each of them involves. 
So these are some of our publications, again, available as um, e-books on our website. Nobody Told Me is um, our longstanding book, uh, The Stories of Parents, which was compiled by um, our CEO, Nicola Enoch. And the truth about Down syndrome tells parents about the real life experiences of our families um, from people who have new babies um, through to adults who have Down syndrome, telling their stories, telling their true life experiences and what what life with a, a child person in their family with Down syndrome is really like. Really, really reassuring. Um, and, and it gives a, a really broad view of different families experiences, too. The little orange book of knowledge, which I already mentioned, is really helpful in terms of making sure that families know what different services do. Uh, again, that's available as an ebook too. Um, our heart surgery uh, experiences tells a lot of family stories about uh, the experiences that they've had when their baby has needed heart surgery, um, and that's uh, that's a really great way of families being reassured about the outcomes for their babies if their baby does have a heart condition. Um, and lastly on there, our breastfeeding document, uh, our breastfeeding, uh, Sarah Oja, our breastfeeding lead, um, has produced that book and that uh, gives lots of information about breastfeeding a baby with Down syndrome. So um, our heart buddy scheme, as was mentioned on the previous page, is for families who have a child who has a baby who has a heart condition. Um, whilst around about 50% of our children are born with heart conditions, a much smaller uh, proportion of those children actually ever go on to need surgery um, because a lot of the babies and children's heart conditions can um can um, resolve themselves without needing um, surgical intervention. But we do have uh, Rosie, who is our Heart Buddies coordinator, and she provides uh, support to families across the country and provides them with a buddy in their local area who can support them if their child does need um, heart surgery in one of the centres across the UK. So a really great service that a lot of parents have, have benefited from um, over the years since that's been running. So please do signpost to, uh, to Heart Buddies if you know anyone who would benefit. Um, as I already mentioned, breastfeeding is um, something that uh, we do feel really passionately about because we know that there are assumptions that our babies with Down syndrome can't breastfeed, but actually um, that's not the case at all. And uh, many of our families do successfully um, breastfeed their babies. Uh, Sarah, our breastfeeding coordinator, has a great deal of experience and does provide training around breastfeeding babies with Down syndrome, but also around how if your uh, baby has an NG tube, how um, how breast milk can be um, still part of, of their provision um, and that they can be then weaned onto um, off the NG tube and onto breastfeeding um, as well. She um, she also provides a great deal of uh, support around things like different kinds of holes that babies might need different positioning uh, and making sure that families do have the, the support they need around what's quite a specialist area, but also making sure that professionals do know that, that our babies do successfully breastfeed. Um, in addition to that, as children are getting a little bit older, um, we have a, a programme called Pants for School, which is really, really successful. And we have um, online groups for that and lots and lots of information on our website. Um, jo is our Pants for School coordinator. Um, and the, the, the aim of the programme is to make sure that professionals and families know that our children can and do really successfully um, get into pants, enable them to be ready to go to school in pants, um, toilet trained. And there are, is a four step programme, which, as you can see on there, there's a lot more detail on our website. Um, and our families are, are invited to take part in boot camps where they're supported through the programme. Um, with June Rogers, who's a specialist in the area of um, toilet training from Bladder and Bowel UK. Um, that's a really success successful programme and we encourage families to start that right from when um, babies are, you know, six months old, um, getting them used to sitting on a potty at, at nappy change time, um, right through to being supported to be in pants ready to go to school and our children do lots of our children do successfully do that as well so please do refer to joe and have a look on our website for that uh, we don't just work with um, preschool families and and families who have babies though we have um 
uh, a developing and expanding range of resources and training for uh, school age children and their families. Um, our primary education program is um, is growing all the time and we have resources on our websites as well um, to make sure that families have support to find the best nursery in the best school. So there are uh, documents on our website to enable parents to have a look for um, what the right questions to ask are and the things that they need to have in place for when their children are ready to start school and when their children are ready to start nursery as well. Lou has already mentioned um, the issue around um, eye care and eye health. Um, we've worked for quite some time with Maggie Woodhouse from Cardiff University around making sure that there is information and training out there for and and um, that parents have the knowledge around eye conditions such as nystagmus um, because maybe there isn't uh, within the healthcare professionals that families are working with the high level of, of information and support that we would want. Uh, on the website, there is um, this document with a parental experience document, but also there are videos that Maggie has produced uh, and there are training sessions that are available as well for our families to make sure that uh, not only the families themselves, but also the professionals they're working with do have the, the right level of, of expertise and information shared with them. Uh, this has been um, our Pops and Pegs programmes have been um, ongoing for quite a number of years and they, uh, because we know that sadly across the country, not all families have the availability of uh, services such as physiotherapy to the level that we would like them at in all different um, trusts and local authorities. And so this online service um, with a, a specialist physiotherapist makes sure that families have access to that wherever they live in the UK. So families are able to join the online programme and get physiotherapy targets and advice right from birth, um, development of fine motor skills, um, the development uh, to encourage development of gross motor skills in their children and be able to work on those things on a daily basis with their children at home. And the early development groups um, also focus on things like speech and language and numeracy and literacy from an early age, because, again, we know that not all services um, in all areas of the country still run things like portage. Um, to make sure that families across the UK have that provision. We've got that um, all available online and the information is all on our website for that, too. We offer um, a huge amount of training. Um, and if you look at the training and tab on our website, you'll see that these are just um, just a snippet of some of the many things that we offer. And we offer Makaton training for families um, and professionals as well. Uh, we have a lot of information about things like disability living allowance. We have drop-ins for disability living allowance um, support because that kind of thing is a real challenge. Those application forms can be very challenging for families. We have um, behavior, uh, boot camps to promote positive behavior and support families um, in supporting the behavior needs of their children. Um, wills and trusts and EHCPs, again, those are things that, that families can um, easily get support from us because maybe they may, can't find a support in their local area that's face to face. And we have that online that's really easily accessible and, and uh, families can access those, but also use professionals can as well. Um, accessing social care is something that, again, varies very widely across the UK. Um, so we have uh, training to encourage parents to be able to ask the right questions, to be able to access social care in their areas. Um, a fairly recent member of our team in terms of um, her role is Dr. Becky Baxter, um, who is now our Director of Education and Speech and Language Therapy. She's been working with the organisation for um, an, a number of years, but now has this role to really develop our um, speech and language and our education offer. Um, and the uh, preschool conference is being run this week, actually, um, on Sunday this week, which is available not only face to face, but um, online. And that's uh, that's being held in Worcester, but it's uh, available for families to join online as well, as you can see. So that's that's really around making sure that um, that professionals and families understand uh, that speech and language needs of our children are not a speech and language delay, but they're a speech and language disorder. 
and that the learning uh, profile of our children who have Down syndrome um, is, is quite a particular learning profile. So making sure that professionals um, understand that and know what that looks like and that families know what that looks like as well so that they can advocate for their own children. Uh, and so that's a, a project that's really going to be developing, expanding over the next few years. And, and Becky's got um, got a big role in in having that um, pushing that forward within the charity. So there's going to be lots more to come there for your um, the families that you work with. Um, we get a lot of parental feedback from our families, both on the um, Facebook groups, on our online groups, on um, in training and parents provide us with feedback all the time about the experiences that they've had. Um, so some of uh, some little snippets here are, are things that, you know, parents would have liked to have had. They maybe um, were a professional such as a health visitor or um, a member of staff didn't know about pads and they would have liked the, the signposting immediately. Um, I've already mentioned in toilet training, some families um, are already underway with that from when their their babies are quite young. And so it's great if you as healthcare professionals know about the toilet training provision that we have and the other services that we provide to make sure that that you know what families are doing and why they're doing it. And you can see there the, the last one that the family said that they were really delighted to see that there were pads posters up in the health centre where they um, where they were spending their time. Because, you know, if it's easy for families to access our services, it makes it so much easier for them to be able to get the information that they need. So a poster up or um, a, a card um, and, and some signposting for you makes such a big difference. It makes a really positive experience for families. And we've got a video now that Lou's going to play that I hope is going to show you a little bit about why PADS is so special to so many of our families. Yeah, this is just a very short video. It's something that we did a few years ago, but I think it says in in, in essence um, why families come to us to to get their support and what the impact that we're having. Hold on a second. Here we go. It's a very short video. I'm Nicola Enoch, and I created Positive About Down Syndrome because I knew from my own experience how really important it is for any new parent to realise that they're not alone. Certainly when my son Tom was born, I felt devastated and I really struggled. And that's really what motivates me because no new or expectant parent should be devastated about the news that their baby has Down syndrome. They should be celebrating the birth. And that's what we're here to do, celebrate the lives of people with Down syndrome. When Elena was born, we found out post-birth that she had Down syndrome. That night I went home, went out looking bad things really and the first thing I came across was the Positive About Down Syndrome website and I literally just read all the stories on there about their journeys, about their experiences with it all and it just gave that reassurance that I just didn't get from anywhere else to be honest with you. Finding pads that in the first few months was just a lifesaver for us, that the community was great, meeting new mums, books that were recommended to us, the courses, Mackerton, Pads has been absolutely amazing in terms of support for me, my family, but also my extended family in terms of providing knowledge. And now I feel quite empowered to be able to move forward. I actually feel so like, proud to be part of this group because they've just done so much for us. And the next set of parents that come through, you just want to do the same and just hold on to them and just take them along this ride because actually it's, it's not so scary. <laughs> Today is a fantastic day. We've had about 200 people here celebrating Pad's fourth birthday. And it's so wonderful to see, you know, not just the children with Down syndrome, but their brothers, sisters and parents all meeting each other in the flesh and um, having a fantastic time celebrating with being members of Pad's. We've joined the Pad's Great Expectations group, uh, which is a group for uh, expectant mothers. All the parents in there, we're all on the same journey, so we're all helping each other out, and it is a real, real community, and it's it's lovely. Once I found Pad, I was then able to see that they offer things like counselling, and this is really good to kind of have that support network. They had to provide us with one-on-one -on -one session, and then they recommended us doing group sessions. Not only did I get fantastic support, I also gained three friends. Pads is a family. It's a community. It's it, You get emotional talking about it. It's friends that you never knew you needed, but you're really glad you've got. There you go. 
So I hope that uh, that that video, um, particularly the mentioning about empowerment and support, um, is uh, I think uh, families would would agree that that is a, a real key point of that. And the um, the issue around empowerment and knowledge is a little bit of an example of what's on here. So as you can see, um, we've got on here. Uh, QR codes for um, a wealth of the different resources that we provide. Um, one of the things that Lou mentioned was around constipation. So there's a specific um, area of the website around that. Um, the links are all on there for the choosing the nursery for local support groups on the website for the um, online books that we've got and for all of our support groups for new parents, expecting parents, grandparents. Um, people um, needing support with breastfeeding and so on. There, there is a wealth of it. Um, on the, the other side of the screen there, that's an example of the uh, pack that we send out for um, not just maternity services, but also for healthcare um, services in any setting. So GP services, um, for health visitors, for pediatricians, neonatal teams, um, those packs are sent out uh, free to all of those different services. So you just need to get in touch with them and we will be delighted to send them out to you for you to uh, share with parents, put up posters and so on. Um, and our lived experience uh, training um, at the bottom there, Lou um, delivers and manages that and our lived experience training has fantastic feedback. It's a really um, successful and really effective way of making sure that um, that healthcare professionals in lots of different settings across the country uh, and in different ranges of uh, backgrounds have access to a really contemporary knowledge around Down syndrome and how to support our families. So that's not just um, in hospitals, but universities and so on. So please do get in touch if you are interested in further training. Um, our healthcare professionals Facebook group is on there. Uh, not just for maternity staff, as I said, uh, please do join, uh, please do sign up to the healthcare professionals group um, on Facebook. We, you'll be very welcome and you can keep up to date with what we have on offer. Um, our website, uh, it's really great to know on our website for you all to know that our website has an accessibility bar. It's really important for a lot of families for whom um, maybe English isn't a first language or don't have uh, it spoken English. So please do um, signpost families to that. Uh, it, it's really, really helpful to make sure that families are all able to get the um, information and support that they need. Um, and, and I know we've had lots of good feedback about that. Families, um, healthcare professionals have found that really, really helpful that, that there's an accessibility bar on there. And we continue with our lunchtime webinars and the next one is um, aimed at the support that we can give to pediatric teams. And that one is on the 20th of May. And so finally, those there's our website um, with all of our resources on, email addresses for myself and for Lou. So please, please get in touch if there's anything that you would like, if there's anything that you would like as a follow-up for today or if you've got any questions. <laughs>